these soldiers were treated when they get home. When Stevie came home, he went to a party in his neighborhood. First, he took his uniform off as soon as the plane landed because he said people were yelling at him almost immediately when he left the airport. Then he went to a party in his own neighborhood and, and, and someone split and spit in his face. Much different from the, the treatment Bobby Frado got when he got back from Korea or the treatment Johnny Rocker got when he came back from World War II. I think this country has learned from that. I think we realize now that we can debate forever the difficult challenge this country has faced and will continue to face about what challenges in freedom require acts of war. The difficult choices. Recognizing those who were killed in the line of duty makes us recognize the true price of war. It makes those decisions about whether this country will enter war and what requires war, what challenges are required of war, what challenges to freedom require us to take part in war. I think this country has changed in those treatments. You know, the heroes are all around us. And for those of you who have trouble with Memorial Day, I have a, just a suggestion for you, and it's something that I took up a long time ago, and it makes this day easier and more difficult, but certainly uh, something that I think helps us recognize today. When you see a veteran with a hat on, go over and just say thank you, and just thank them for their service. You know, la last year I spoke in Everett, and, and uh, the Veterans Commissioner gave me some war records from my father's service in World War II. A couple weeks later, he sent me the war records, and there were a lot of things there that I had never heard of. My father never talked about the war and the battles that, that, that he was in, and I started realizing there are so many her heroes amongst us in our own neighborhoods that find it very difficult to talk about their experiences in war. Today is the only day that the United States stops to recognize those were killed in action. And I, I was wondering, people like Michael Gazzetti and Francis Gack, uh, Glacken, what they would say to us today, what they would want us to do to remember them. And I start to, to think about what this country is and what it can be and what it should be. And I think some people believe that freedom is an opportunity to, to gouge ourselves and spoil ourselves with greed and materialism. And, and instead of celebrating the real values of democracy and capitalism, we become greedy and we become selfish and isolated. And I, I begin to think that those folks, folks like Michael Gazzetti and Francis Gack, Glacken and Private Cabral and all those men and women that were killed in action would want of us to remember the values that brought them to service in this country, the, the, the values of unselfishness, the values of neighborhood and community before self, the true sacrifice that brought them to take the action that they did take. Those values have brought our country to where we are today. Those examples of those who are willing to make the ultimate sacrifice I should, are the values that should be celebrated today. As we remember those who've made the ultimate sacrifice, and, and many of them are all over the, spread all over the world, Mr. Casio's brother, who for the first time, I've known the Casio family for 15 years, and I never know that Joe's Casio, Joe Casio's brother was killed uh, in Natuno, Italy, and is buried in Sicily. I never knew that until I went over to the house to talk to Stephen. So, from all of us elected officials, for, for, for my generation, I want to say thank you. I can't tell you how proud I am to be the son of a veteran. I can't imagine what it is to be a Gold Star mother, like Diana Ramirez, who lost her son, uh, lives over in Chelsea. Her son enlisted and was killed, soldier from Revere, and what she's going through at this time. But I want to thank all of you and, and this great city of Cambridge for taking yet another day to thank those men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice and let us all try to live out their dreams in the way we live our lives through continued sacrifice, through unselfishness, through the values that they bestowed, putting their country before themselves, to not isolate ourselves from the challenges of this world or this country 
And I also think that they would, wouldn't they be great examples during the most difficult economic time of our lifetime as this country sees these great economic challenges and starts to pit middle class people against poor people and poor people against poorer people, documented citizens against undocumented citizens. Would those men and women stand for that within our own country? I think not. And if there were ever a time that they would want us to stand together as a nation and show our toughness and show our resilience as they did, it would be now. It's been an honor to speak to you this morning.